Well, thank you for joining us this morning here at the Hebrew Cemetery in Dundalk. My name is Zeke Cohen. I'm the city councilman that represents this district. And today we stand united as Jews, Christians, Muslims, atheists, elected officials, activists, organizers, educators, and Baltimoreans from all walks of life. We stand today against the rising tide of anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim, anti-Asian hatred, anti-blackness, homophobia, xenophobia, and every other form of bias and bigotry. We stand here today in defiance of the person who sought to sow fear and hate by painting swastikas on poles in Fells Point and on Jewish tombstones here in this cemetery. We stand united for justice, for love, and for each other. I wanna thank delegates John Cardin, Dana Stein, Sandy Rosenberg, Brooke Learman, Robin Lewis, and Dahlia Tarr who are here with us today. I wanna to thank Councilman Izzy Patoka. I wanna thank Howard Libet from the Baltimore Jewish Council who co-organized this event with me today. Thank you to Steve Vanek, president of the Jewish Ceremony, the Jewish Cemetery Association, Rabbi Andrew Bush, Molly from Jews United for Justice, Mark Terrell, president of the Associated Jewish Federation of Baltimore, Kobe Little, president of the NAACP, Al Hathaway, Zainab Chowdhury from the Council on American Islamic Relations. Thank you to Bishop Dennis Madden, Pastors Jim Hamilton, Stephen Thomas, Mark Edelson. Thank you to Lydia Walter Rodriguez from Casa de Maryland, to Rob Farrell from Organizing Black. All these people are united here today. When I saw those swastikas on these gravestones, I thought about my great grandmother. My most prized possession is this letter that she wrote to me when I was one year old. In the letter, she left me this gold coin. And in the middle of a coin is a tiny hole. My great grandmother was a seamstress. And when Jews would go to escape from Austria, the Nazis would confiscate their money. And she wasn't going to let Hitler win. So she sewed her coins into her clothing, thus the tiny hole at the top of this coin. And she made it here to the United States with her money and with her dignity intact. She escaped before Hitler came to power. Yet her entire family was exterminated in the concentration camps. She made the choice to travel to this foreign unknown land called America without family, community, or command of the English language. And make no mistake, when my grandmother got on that boat for New York, there were Americans that did not want her here. But there were also people of all faiths that welcomed her and welcomed the Jewish people with open arms. I thank God my grandmother had the courage to come here. I also thank God for the Americans that welcomed her here. Because if she had not gotten on that ship, and if this country had not taken her in, however begrudgingly, I would not be standing here today serving my city and my country as an elected member of its government. There is a rising tide of anti-Semitism, white nationalism, and neo-fascism lurking in the shadows of cities throughout America and Europe. We know what it means when swastikas show up on our tombstones. There are people here who still want us dead. The hatred that fueled the desecration of this sacred Jewish burial ground is the same hatred that fueled, Eric, or that fueled Dylan Roof to viciously murder nine black parishioners in South Carolina. It's the same hatred 
that struck fear in the hearts of our Asian neighbors, that tells trans children they don't belong in this world, that tells our immigrant brothers and sisters and siblings to go back home. There has always been a direct line between the swastika, the burning of the cross, and the noose. But know this, when you come for us, you are coming for all of us. Here in Baltimore, we are each other's keeper. We stand together across lines of race, religion, ethnicity, color, and creed. We will not be divided or deceived into believing that we are each other's enemies, scrapping for scarce resources. By standing together today, tomorrow, and every day, we will show this world that hate will not win. Thank you for joining us here today. It is now my great honor to bring up the director of the Baltimore Jewish Council, my friend and partner in organizing this event, Howard Libet. Thank, thank you, Zeke, for those powerful comments. Um, as, as all of you can imagine, seeing those photos from this past weekend was appalling, um, disturbing on so many levels. And, but to see the community response, all, everyone here today from all different faiths, all different communities, elected officials, faith leaders, act, activists, is so heartening to see that we all stand together against hate. It is so important for us all to be allies. Whenever any of us are attacked, all of us are attacked. And this display today says to me, says to the Jewish community, we have friends and supporters across Baltimore. Not a surprise, because it's been that way for many years, and we stand with other communities when they're under attack. But it is so heartening for everyone to come out here in this show of important unity. So I wanna say thank you to the community, and we will all together stand against hate. And one final thank you, which is I know Baltimore City Police are working on this. They're treating it as a hate crime. I know they've been out here, they've talked to neighbors, they are trying to investigate, they are treating this seriously like they should. And whatever the outcome, they will do their best to help prevent it from happening again. So thank you to everyone for coming out. And I'm gonna welcome up Rabbi Andrew Bush from Baltimore Hebrew Congregation, who is also president of the Baltimore Jewish Council. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Councilman, for organizing this important gathering. For, for those rabbis here, we likely have only stood in this cemetery for the normal, for burial, to support mourners and to remember those who are deceased. It's unusual to gather here for the abnormal, for an attack. Three thoughts. When you walk around a Jewish cemetery, and they're all about this, you'll see stones big, small, not so big, on top of graves. They symbolize many different things, but let me give three meanings. One, they symbolize that someone remembered who was buried here in the past, the life, the loves, the impact they had on the world. By leaving a stone, we remember that. Sadly, today, something I've never thought of before, they symbolize also what happens to the resting place of those we remember, specifically when it's been desecrated, and a reminder that it is the communities, and we appreciate the larger community support, to care for those we remember in the present. But Rabbi Zoe Klein gives a third meaning about what the stone means. It's a stone, it's a foundation, a foundation upon which not just the Jewish community, a foundation upon which the broader community gathered here together can build to work against prejudice, hatred, discrimination, anti-Semitism at this moment we focus on, but as was said, all prejudice and hatred. These simple stones remind us of more than just the deceased. They remind us of our responsibility now and moving forward to build a society where all, living and more importantly, alive and in the future, can live safely and broadly and happily. Thank you.
we're next going to hear from Steve Benick, uh, the president of the Cemetery Association. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, to help denounce anti-Semitism and hate crimes. Uh, first, special thank you, uh, City Councilman Z. Cohen, um, Howard Libet, and all the others that were involved in helping plan this gathering today. Um, again, my name is Stephen Venick. I'm the president of the Jewish Cemetery Association of Greater Baltimore. Um, it's an agency of the Associated Jewish Federation. And just as a brief history, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we formed in 1999 as an oversight committee to all the Jewish cemeteries in the Baltimore area. Uh, we saw a need in the community that there were cemeteries that were going to not be able to be looked after properly. So, including myself, uh, we formed a board. It's comprised of volunteers in the community, and we all manage or have something to do with an individual cemetery. Uh, we take great pride in our vital role to maintain the cleanliness, grass cutting, fixing of headstones, and overall dignity of our lost loved ones. The nature of vandalism in this or any cemetery is distasteful, disheartening, and as a Jew, downright scary. We are living in times that people feel they can say and do what they want, when they want, no matter the hurt or collateral damage it may cause others. The acts that were carried out here were first reported to me and subsequently taken care of very quickly. I was first notified this past Sunday evening from some visitors that came here on July 4th. One of our caretakers uh, who's here today, Marty Glass, uh, I want to give a special thank you to Marty. He came out here first thing Monday morning. I think I sent an email about 5.30. He was here within the hour. I uh, cleaned all the headstones. was actually on his way for vacation, put his vacation off, um, just to make sure that what happened here was, was taken care of as quickly as possible. I'm glad the JCA is here and we have the resources and infrastructure that multiple families did not have to see this heinous act while visiting their loved ones. We've been in close contact with the local police to follow up and patrol the neighborhood in case of any copycat performances. We're also looking into further security measures to try to keep this cemetery and all of our cemeteries as safe as possible. If we all work together as a community, we can help put an end to this once and for all. Uh, I'll leave you with one final thought. Um, there's a phrase in the Jewish religion, chesed shel emes, which has taken care of the deceased. It's one of the highest mitzvahs, which is a great deed to take care of the deceased. And the reason is the people here, they can't repay you for, for your act of kindness. So if you do something in a cemetery, you help out a cemetery, those people can't thank you for it. Um, so if we all use that motto, hopefully we can prevent this from happening ever again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, I do want to thank Council Member Izzy Patoka as well, who alerted me. Um, you know, we share these lines here in Dundalk and around Graceland Park between the city and the county. And regardless of which side this type of activity takes place on, we're all responsible for it. And so I appreciate your leadership as well. Um, I'm now going to ask all of our elected officials to step forward um, for just some very brief words, beginning with Delegate Robin Lewis. And if everyone could just come together. Thank you, Councilman Cohen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Delegate Robin Lewis. I represent the 46th District, which is where the sacred ground resides. I live not far from here, and I feel the pain of the Jewish community in the face of this hate crime. I believe I may be the only African-American member of the General Assembly who attended Jewish day school as a child back in Indiana where I grew up. Hebrew Academy of Northwest Indiana representing this morning. My parents sent me and my sisters to that academy so that we could learn about other cultures, starting with our neighbor's culture um, right next door. The reason that experience is important and why I mention it this morning is first to remind everyone here that solidarity begins very young and the ties that I forged with Jewish friends and neighbors continue to this day and make it possible for me to feel an amazing empathy and compassion 
and duty to respond in, uh, in the face of events like this. This is my district. This is my home. Hate is not welcome here. I'll do all I can to make sure that we continue to build from love and solidarity going forward. Look at all the love around here and just remember that's what we're made of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Delegate Lewis, for standing in solidarity with us today. Um, any of the other elected officials like to say some brief words? I'm Delegate Sandy Rosenberg. Unlike Delegate Lewis, I did not attend a Jewish day school. <laughs> but I attended a Jewish, black, and some Christian public high school, as some of you may know, called City College. And my colleague and friend, dear classmate, Reverend Al Hathaway, we were talking, is a City College classmate. What happened there on a daily basis, communities, people, young men, unfortunately in those days only young men, gathering every day to learn together, to say no in September of 1954 to those who would say we should not, we should protest Brown, for, Brown versus the board instead of obeying it. And then also this morning, the, Reverend Hathaway and I were talking with Bishop Madden, sharing our recollections of the Pope's visit to this, Pope John Paul II's visit to Baltimore and what that meant for a shared community. I've worked on hate crimes legislation. This brings it home where we are today. And it's heartening to see everyone here today, the broad group of people who are here, it's heartening to know that our police department is working on this with the seriousness that unfortunately it deserves. Thank you. I take this very personally. Both of my parents were Holocaust survivors. My grandparents were all murdered. My aunts and uncles were murdered and they were murdered under the flag of the swastika. And so when you bring that flag here to Baltimore, we're gonna fight back. And we're not going to fight back with this. We're going to fight back by redoubling our efforts on public awareness. We're going to fight back and apprehend those cowards that would desecrate gravestones that can't fight back. There's no more cowardly act than to attack a cemetery. So I say to those that did this, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? And we will fight back. And thank you all for attending on very short notice. And thank you, Mr. Glass, for giving up your vacation to protect the defenseless. Thank you all. Hi, I'm Delegate John Carden and represent the 11th District out in the county, just neighbors to uh, Councilman Cohn and Delegate Lewis's district right here. And along with Delegate Stein, um, we stand united with all the people here. Um, the comments made really, really um, sowed in me a need for us to continue to, as, as was mentioned, to educate all of our community about how this is hurtful. It's not just hurtful to the Jewish community, it's hurtful to everyone. And it doesn't get us any, it doesn't take us anywhere. So I'll just say the, the, this, and this is kind of what I've been thinking about as, as Councilman Cohn said those very, very um, uh, effective comments um, about his grandmother and the legacy that she left him. And that is that Martin Luther King said that if they show you hate, you show them love. The only way we're gonna be able to fight this is to bring the community together to find the people that have desecrated a cemetery and to make sure we educate all of us on how to be good, smart community citizens. We all are living together in a world that should be peaceful. Let's make that happen. Thank you. Hello, hi, my name is Delegate Dana Stein. I'm also represent, along with uh, Delegate John Cardin, D District 11, Baltimore County. 
you know, one of my kids, upon hearing what had happened in this precious cemetery, said, it's hard to believe that in this day and age, something like that could happen. But sadly, in this day and age, we are seeing more expressions of hate, be it against Jews, be it against African Americans, be it against Muslims, against other minorities. And as my colleague Delga Lewis said, whenever there is this type of action of hate against any group, it affects us all. It reminds us that we all potentially, any group represented here, could be the victim of such a, a vicious attack, so a, a hateful, uh, hateful painting of swastikas in the cemetery. And so that's why it's so important that we all come together to denounce this and to make a collective action that we do not accept this. We push back against this. This does not represent the broader community and that this should never happen again in this cemetery or any other sacred location. So many thanks to Councilman C. Cohen and the Baltimore Jewish Council for organizing this. And many, many thanks to all the different representatives, so many different groups for being here in solidarity as, again, we stand against this hateful act. Thank you. I do also want to recognize and thank Scott from Mayor Brandon Scott's office. Thank you for standing with us here today. We know that the mayor is a great ally to the Jewish people, and so thank you for that. We also have many allies across this city, people of different faiths, races, ethnicities. And so I now like to ask folks from the Muslim community, if you could come stand with us um, and say a few words um, as well. I begin in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. On behalf of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, the Maryland Muslim communities uh, stand in strong solidarity with Jewish communities who are impacted by this cowardly attack on the faith community. Um, as many speakers before myself have mentioned, an attack on one faith community is an attack on all faith communities. And this transcends politics. This transcends politics and it speaks to the core of our common humanity, our shared humanity. Uh, there is no room for hate within our city. As a proud native of Baltimore who was born and raised in the city, it breaks my heart to see that there is this level of bigotry and animosity, uh, but we will not stand for this. We will not stand silent while these forces of hatred continue to try to create division amongst us. We will continue to speak out and stand in solidarity with all of our friends here to continue to push back against anti-Semitism um, and all forms of hatred, Islamophobia, anti-Muslim bigotry, anti-Black racism, um, all forms of, a big, of bigotry that we're seeing in our society. Um, so it's great to be here today. Thank you so much, Councilman Cohen, for your leadership. Thank you for our delegates and senators who are here with us and all of our community partners. Um, and we will continue to work with you to uh, seek justice and seek, um, seek uh, appropriate measure outcome. Thank you. Hello, and uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, shalom everyone, and thank you, uh, Kahan, Councilman Kahan. Uh, I would say hate is any form is bad. It can be against Muslims, Hispanics, Asians, or Afro-Americans. Today, I'm here as a Muslim supporting Jewish community. If we do not stand united, with our Jewish neighbors, it will be someone else's turns tomorrow. Hate and racism is a seed that will grow with time. Hate crimes are on the rise in USA, and we have to discourage such incident. We have to do our part to not only condemn, but stop all kind of racism. Never is now. We have to stop all kind of hate. Remember, it's Jewish community today and tomorrow will anyone of us stop racism now. Thank you. God bless America. Thank you. I'd now welcome up um, members of the Christian faith as well. We have Bishop Madden, Pastor Thomas, uh, Pastor Hamilton um, to come up. Um, and say a few words with us. Oh, and of course, 
Reverend Hathaway. Reverend Hathaway. Um, come on up. Thank you very much. My name is Bishop Dennis Madden. I'm so glad that we are gathered here today to say in the best way we can that we are one, that we believe that we are one. We are one family created by God and that hate will not win the day. Love will overcome hate. I was so saddened when I heard about what took place on these sacred grounds. It's bad enough that we have an increase in anti-Semitism. That's terrible. But it's especially heinous when you attack the resting place, the sacred grounds of the Jewish people. We pray in our tradition, eternal rest grant to them. May they rest in peace. May the Lord always take care of them. And that is violated when people would do the kind of things that they did in the cemetery. We know that people don't are not born with hatred in their heart. They learn it in various ways. And I think what we are doing this morning is giving a teaching lesson that we love each other and love will win in the end. Reverend Al Hathaway, Union Baptist Church. The Baltimore community is a tapestry. It is a mosaic. It has woven through it a thread and that thread is mutual respect and love. Sometimes that thread may be frayed, but it will never be broken. So we're here to make certain that you see this tapestry of our great city, our great metropolitan area, and may everyone be assured that you may pull on it, but you will never break it. That we are here united in our diversity because we believe in the greater. To Councilman Coleman, to all of our elected officials, officials to all of you who are here, to the media. We stand here yet again facing another tragic reminder of how much work we have to do as a nation when it considers race relations. When I received the call on yesterday that we were having this press conference, I couldn't help but ponder the experiences that we've had just this past year as we're gathered together hoping to raise a voice of unity and tolerance in the wilderness of social and economic inequality. Couldn't help but think about COVID-19 and how this microscopic enemy that we all face doesn't see my blackness, your whiteness, the fact that I'm a Christian or you're a Jew or you're a Muslim, that I'm a male, that you may be a female. It sees just, just as human and every disaster that we face, whether it be a natural disaster or a biological disaster that we face throughout history, sees us as just that human. How powerful we could be, especially as a nation, if we too saw ourselves and saw that our differences don't outweigh our similarities. I just took a moment to value and love each other in spite of our differences, recognizing that we have more in common than we do different. And it's my hope and my prayer that today begins a moment, at least here in Baltimore, where we pull down the things that separate us, that we come together as a community to unite as one, to show our nation what change really looks like. Thank you and God bless you all. It was my joy to get here early and walk the cemetery and see how peaceful it is here. The names, the memories, Mothers, grandmothers, uncles and aunts, fathers, children, resting here in peace. These are memories that are held sacred in the sacred ground. The attempt to take those memories and sully them, the attempt to ruin our history by retelling it through hate, that is what's happening right now. It's to steal away our stories. And we people of faith, we are people who tell stories. It's what we do. We're here to remember together. We're here to tell truth together. And so when we stand against this kind of action, we're standing to say that we are hand in hand, walking into the future, remembering our past and knowing who we are. I'm Jim from Church on the Square, this cold Lutheran. We are a connection of many faiths together inside of our community, and we 
revel. We enjoy the interfaith work that we do to combat this kind of hate. And I encourage us to continue that work because as we combat ignorance, we remember together, we hold our ancestors in honor. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to our Christian community for standing with us here today. Are there any other rabbis that would want to say a few words? Well, listen, we again are standing united and we have more allies than enemies. I want to bring up and recognize some of our friends from Casa de Maryland, from the NAACP, from Healing City Baltimore, as well as organizing black um, to stand with us and anyone who'd like to say a few words we sincerely appreciate your allyship your friendship your partnership and for you being here with us today I'm going to start with Casa de Maryland. Thank you. Casa members today stand in unity and solidarity against the acts of hatred that have happened here. We also stand, um, we also stand and will continue to stand in the continuous conscious or unconscious acts that continue to make community members feel that they are unwelcomed in our city. Uh, this is a reminder of the importance of us coming together in solidarity unity and strength to combat the individual actions of hate in addition to the systems that continue to oppress us as a society here. And we stand in solidarity and unity and with a commitment to continue to fight united against those systems until we dismantle the white supremacy that is continuing to emerge in our city. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the work you do on behalf of our immigrant brothers, sisters, and siblings. Um, I want to welcome up Kobe Little, president of the Baltimore NAACP chapter. And I also want to have up uh, Molly Amster, Jews United for Justice, as well. Good morning. I'm Kobe Little, serve as president of the Baltimore NAACP. Thank you to my friend Zeke and Howard and Sarah for organizing us in this show of unity. It is good to stand in solidarity with all of the sisters and brothers who are here today to say that we are united against hate. Cemeteries, as it has been said, are, are holy ground. They are sacred spaces. We express our faith uh, through spiritual means. We must also do the work to build unity, the work to build solidarity, the work to educate and to sensitize, the work to teach not only tolerance, but appreciation for diversity. Whether it is social science or biological science, the record is clear, diversity is a strength. And so we stand today uh, in solidarity and in unity, expressing a love, as has been said, we are all children of God. And we pray that the love of God that flows through each of us also brings us together and connects us and discourages fear and encourages hope. As I step away from the podium, I do have to thank uh, the members of the Maryland General Assembly led by Delegate Mark Chang, who passed legislation that will now enable us to hold the perpetrators of these vile acts accountable for, for their action. And I am Howard and Sarah and Molly and, 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 and Dr. Chaudhry, I am certain that the work that we are doing now with the Office of the Attorney General to develop a statewide hate crimes task force is more relevant now than ever. 
we must have the capacity to identify and to respond to hate crime, to be able to share information, and to be able to educate our children so that the era of hate finally comes to a close. May God bless all of us and keep us in peace and guide us with love and hope. I do that. Just briefly want to thank and acknowledge my colleague and friend, Councilman Glover, Antonio Glover, who's here with us today. <laughs> Dr. Buckley, come on up. Greetings, everyone. Indeed, we do stand here today. Thank you. I guess I could have brought it down. <laughs> we do indeed stand here today in solidarity. And as Kobe was just speaking, I thought to myself, has he been in my class this semester? See, I'm a faculty member at Coppin, and this summer I taught a class on diversity. And one of the things that I emphasized over and over again is diversity is strength. Yes, diversity is difference, but when we bring all of those different things together, it's like build, um, baking a cake or, or cooking your favorite recipe. You have different ingredients. And as we stand here today, we are different. But together we are strong and we are great. And Healing City, we are about Healing City. We recognize and we acknowledge that trauma exists and indeed this vile and cowardly act is traumatic. I'm not gonna say was, it is because as I heard the passion from Zeke and some of our other speakers earlier, I, I, I hear it and I feel it. And as our Muslim sister said earlier, if it happens in one community, rest assured, it's gonna come knocking on your door next. And that is why we have to continue to pull together so that punks like the ones that came up in here like a thief in the night, because they didn't come in here during the daytime hours, you know, they were scary. They came in here at night. They couldn't even face the sunlight. We have to continue to stand together as a united force, irrespective of your race and ethnicity, regardless of your immigration status, your gender, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let us continue to stand together. Let us continue to be committed to this um, belief and conviction that we can and we will all heal from traumatic and racist acts such as this. Thank you. And I want to recognize and bring up uh, Molly Amster from Jews United for Justice. Thank you, Councilman. I'm Molly Amster. I'm the Baltimore Director for Jews United for Justice. And we organize with many of the people behind me on racial and economic justice issues across the state. It is so meaningful to have our partners here with us today because we know that as Emma Lazarus said, and as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and as many others have paraphrased, our freedom, uh, we are not free until all of us are free. And we know that our freedom is bound up in the freedom of others. So I just wanna thank everyone for being here today, but also thank you for all of the solidarity over the years. And I look forward to continuing to fight the systems of hate and white supremacy and white nationalism that bring us here today. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to say a few words? All right, so then I'm gonna close it out and just say, remember what you saw here. We were brought here by an act of hatred, but more than that, we were brought here by love. Like Kobe and so many others said, it is love that's holding us together here right now. Today, you heard from folks who were Jewish, Muslim, Christian, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, all the different races, ethnicities, all of us standing here united as one. That's what Baltimore is about. That's what the best of these United States is about. And so know this, when you come for one of us, you come for all of us. And so again, I wanna thank everybody for joining here today. I hope that this can be a moment where we all learn 
not only the horror of what was done to Izzy and my and so many of our ancestors, but to imagine a different future where we don't allow each other to be consumed by hatred or fear or violence, but that we continue to stand united like we did today. And again, I thank you to everybody for coming out and joining with us in this moment of solidarity. Thank you.